Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler from Melder Production, and today I want to talk about making spring reverbs in M Turbo Reverb. So here you see we actually have like two springs here, but the one I'm going to make is actually different from these. I think it's a better version. I think I actually made this one. I believe I made, but here, although it looks like the same GUI, I have it sounds a little bit different. I'll let you hear it. Listen especially to the initial transient. Hear that pew pew, that pew sound? Before I didn't have that, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So let's get into it. We're going to go to here to B, where it's just on the default setting. There's nothing here. Blank, essentially. The first thing we want to do is we want to get rid of the early reflections. We don't need these at all. Although you can put them in if you want. I'm going to change this early and late. Since there's no early reflections, I'm going to turn it all the way to late. And let's go into late reflections 1, LR1, right here. So here's where we're going to start. I might move this length down a little bit, but you can set that however you like. Right now it sounds like this. To be honest, I really like that sound, but that's too smooth. That's nothing like a real reverb. We want something grittier, uh, grainier, etc. So what we're going to do is, first I'll turn off this dampening low and dampening high, like that. Size, I can leave there for now. The delay width we want to change. So now it's in stereo. <laughs> As far as I know, spring reverbs are all mono. There could be some you know, exceptions I don't know about, but we're gonna change that to zero, the delay width down here. So now it should be in mono. Of course, if you want you know, actual stereo width, you can turn that up. I'm just doing this here to be a little bit more authentic. And now we have this reverb, this algorithm here in the designer, this is where we're gonna change things. So at first here, reverb, you hear what it sounds like. Eh. It sounds smooth, it sounds great, but that's not what we want. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use some comb filters. So if I just have like a comb filter here, like C. Sounds kind of like garbage. What we can do is we can add some things in here, like we'll call this comb network. We're gonna put a bracket here and we're gonna put FL for filter low and FH for filter high. Now what this will do is it'll let us use the dampening here. So here if I have it like this, it doesn't sound any different, but let's say we turn down the gain here for dampening. You see that really gets rid of that high end. And you can also adjust the frequency, the Z, etc. The sparse will, I think, determine how often it happens. So I believe that when this is going through here, it uh, go, I wanna say, yeah, when it goes through, there's multiple delay lines. And at two, like every other delay line will be filtered here, every delay line, or you can move it up and it's like, okay, every six delay lines, etc. So it just kind of uh, adjusts how much dampening it has. And same thing here. I'll actually move this down here like this. And you can turn the frequency. Yeah, 200 is a little bit much, maybe around 100 or so. So that's good, but still sounding pretty terrible, right? What we're going to do is actually put this in parallel. So we're going to put P brackets here. This is good. I didn't have this before. Status. If you have like a bad command, it's going to be in red. Let me put this here. It's okay now. I could put another bracket there. Just, I don't know. I have ADD or actually I do have ADD, but I have OCD also, I guess. Uh, I need that there at the end. And this isn't going to do anything because you're like, what's it putting in parallel? But we can actually add more than one here. So here it's just one comb filter. Try adding a second one. And we can even do three if we want. This is starting to sound more like a comb filter. You may or may not like, you know, that grainy delay sound. We can actually change that to make it more or less grainy. And we can also change the size here. So I'll play it here. Increase the size. That just sounds like a delay. I don't want that. Move it down. That's make it too much. And to get it a little bit smoother, we can just mess with this a little bit, adjust the dampening. Get that sounding however you like it. But this isn't the uh, the pew part it sounded like before. What do they call it? In the 
for uh, reverb aficionados. Was it drip, I guess? But uh, anyways, just, just take this off for now so we can hear it. And we're going to copy this, and then we're going to delete it. I want to show you something else. I want to show you how you can actually get that pew sound. So we're going to put F-A. You're wondering, what is this? This is just an all-pass filter. If I play it here, you don't hear anything. It's like there's, there's no difference. If I have it 100% wet, or it's maybe like a slight difference. But what this does is actually changes the phase. So the actual frequency isn't changed at all. The only thing that happens is the phases are changed. I forgot what happens. Is it the... I think high frequencies are delayed more, or the low frequencies are delayed more. Anyways, but you don't really hear it because it's delayed such a small amount, it's almost undetectable. But let's say we did more. Like, let's say 90. Now we try it. Hearing laser sounds sounds like something from a sci-fi movie. If you don't have a guitar or something to play this with, you can also use this, this generate impulse response here. Let me turn the output down a little bit. And then you can compare it to dry. Now, once we have that, this is pretty good. We can put this here, put just a semicolon there, and then we'll go right in here and add this. Now these together should sound like our spring. So you can do whatever you want with that. Uh, from there, I would adjust the dampening. I might want to adjust the size too. To get everything exactly how you want it. There's all sorts of things you can mess with here. Uh, you can change the delay focus. Sometimes that helps, sometimes it doesn't. Or, you know, well, delay max. Let's try this 50%. So for me, when I turn the delay minimum up, that's actually changing it. It's a little bit smoother, but if I move it down a little bit more. Get that however you like, and of course, adjust the dampening however you like. Uh, let me move that back down where it was. Another thing, you can also change the seed to make it uh, sound a little bit different. I don't want to go into this. I think on the Melda Production website or on the YouTube channel, they talk about this more. You have the Smart Seed Designer and just the Random Seed. What this does is there's lots of different, like, a, is it the coefficients? Uh, I don't know. Whatever the variables are, they're going into this. Like, for example, how long the delay times are in this comb filter. And for each of the three comb filters, these are somewhat, like, randomized. And they're determined by the seed. For actually, lots of these have, I shouldn't say hidden parameters. You can find them. But parameters I didn't put in there that you can actually set. And using the C can actually set these for you, like the different delay times, maximum, minimum, etc. And by doing this, we can change them randomly. So you can get all sorts of different sounds. Now you're probably thinking like, well, I don't want to just go through a whole bunch of like random seeds like that. It's going to take forever. You can use the smart seed generator and you can put in different attributes about it and set how much you want it to uh, uh, maybe smooth out the resonances, the level differences between left and right. If I was doing another algorithm that wasn't a spring reverb that had stereo, I might want to use those. And you can choose that and then you hit perform smart search and it'll just give you a list of results that you can try each one by clicking on it. And you can be like, oh, this one sounds good, this one sounds good, and it'll eliminate all like the other random ones that don't sound good. So that's really useful. And I'll go and show you what I did on the one I showed you in the beginning. So this is the algorithm I showed you uh, in the beginning. What I did here is almost the exact same thing. Only thing I did here is I have uh, two comb filters, so it's like having two springs there in parallel, just like before. I just put a filter here. There's a low pass filter at 4,000, just to cut off all that high end that maybe I don't want. And then here, I wanted to make this a little bit uh, adjustable. 
So what I did here is the all pass filter, you can actually adjust things by going to parameter one here, make it sound a little bit different. Let me see if I turn all the way up, a little bit more noticeable. As opposed to this. So I'm getting a little bit more like laser zap the more I turn this down. And that's based upon this. The, uh, what is it? I don't know, is it coefficient? No, it's probably not coefficient. I don't know my math. I'm sorry about that. Uh, wherever the parameter is in here. And you can adjust that using parameter one. I also have this uh, going 10, but this S is serial. So I have all these going in serial. And it's, this uh, pound sign is adjusting the complexity. So it'd be 10 times 10. So in this case, it'd be a hundred different uh, all pass filters in a row. And you can adjust that. So maybe here's 90, 80, 30, or I can go up to whatever, uh, 200, etc. And that's just determined by the user, which I haven't made a GUI for, but if I wanted to, I could. So hopefully this gives you some ideas of how you can create your own different spring reverbs and things. And you could probably create something that's not a spring reverb, but maybe sounds cool. You could use the same technique going into like a hall or something. Just create something new and unique that's not actually real. And that's always fun. So if you like this, give me a thumbs up. Leave me any questions and comments down below. And be sure to check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.